everybody. I'm Lunia and welcome back to Luna Oi. Uh, today I'm very happy to have two Brazilian comrades in my show, in my interview. And uh, I'm very curious right now about what's going on in Brazil, especially in this pandemic. And these are my two comrades here today. Welcome you. And can you please introduce yourself first, Dofora Drag? Uh, it's this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, guys. I'm uh, a drag queen in Brazil, and now I'm out of drag. Uh, I have a channel named Doutora Drag, but my drag name is Dimitra Vulcana. I'm also a teacher in Brazil, and I have problem to be a drag and a communist drag in Brazil. But I'm here, and I'm living here, and I have to, to try to work this out. We have a communist and drag queen, yay! Yeah! It's not Kacha. It's not in America drag. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it. I, I, I in new Twitter. If you use Twitter, I'm uh, I'm Dimitra Vulcana. And about you, Leticia, Leticia, Leticia. Leticia. That's, that's hard. I know it's hard. Uh, I'm Leticia. I have. I am Brazilian. I'm from Rio. I'm 43. I have a daughter and a dog. I have a medical degree I have never used. I work as a translator and now I have a podcast and we're not a, a politics podcast, but we also talk about politics and it's definitely a left-wing Antifa podcast. Yeah. And if you want if you want to follow us, our uh, handle and Twitter handle is at Pistolando, which is the name of the podcast, which is somewhere down here, pod, just one word all together. And that's us. Okay, welcome you two to my uh, channel. Thank I'm you. so happy to talk to you. Because actually, uh, I'm very curious about Brazil because on the news of Vietnam, there are not really many news about Brazil and mostly like very vague, very like in general. You are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, about this in this uh, global pandemic and everybody knows about it and it's not a hoax, okay? It's called COVID-19. I'm curious about like what is the government over there is dealing with COVID-19 pandemic. First, let's talk about the economy. Like, what are they dealing with? Like unemployment rate and like the business over there, and then the food price, something like that. The plan and what are they doing right now? I I, I can say I can tell about food price. Um, in Brazil, uh, we our staple meat is rice and beans. Uh, exactly the ones. Uh, that become so expensive that for a whole week it was all the news uh, we could talk in Brazil. Beans and rice are very expensive expensive here. Uh, for some time in pandemic, we have to 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 talk about that and talk how we can manage uh, uh, how to to buy that in, in the in the poor class in Brazil because it the, the price was was very high. The gas for cooking became more expensive too. Some parts of the country went back to the old habit uh, of cooking cooking with fire, firewood, for example. And, and uh, also in Brazil, we have uh, Petrobras and, and gas uh, price. Uh, have not to has not to to be so high. Yeah, Petrobras yeah. Petrobras uh, is our country uh, our company. So we do not not have to to pay so much to to cook our food. So that's the 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 first one problem I think because if we don't eat, we cannot make anything anything even a, a revolution here because we need. <laughs> can do revolution with an empty stomach yes yep. and yep. The, the prices of food went up because the dollar is very expensive now i mean the ratio is really bad for us now so uh farmers prefer to export their food their grains oh. and everything else instead of selling it inside the country that's why the prices went up the season in vietnam is solely opposite so like when the pandemic started in vietnam in march this uh, last year uh, Vietnamese government immediately stopped exporting rice because we wanted to secure food for our own people first. We stopped exporting rice for two months. And after two months, when we for sure that there's no shortage in rice in Vietnam, we resumed exporting rice. That's how the 
this evil communist government care about poor people and our own people, right? Uh, we like immediately, uh, even though like we are the second biggest country in the world who export rice. Rice exporting is like huge income amount of Vietnam, but we stop exporting rice for two months to like uh, protect the food secure in Vietnam, and that's it. And then the like, correct also, way. Yes, that's the only way to deal with this. Yeah, right. And and at the same time, Vietnam, like a lot of people donated rice. We have a rice ATM. We call it rice ATM. But like people like rice, like maybe like the business who sell rice in Vietnam, they just donated a lot of rice and poor people just go there and take rice for free. And after a few weeks, there were not enough poor people to get all the rice. So like even like the owner, like the guy who came up with the idea of rice ATM, he had to beg people to come and take the rice. So like too many people donated and not enough poor people to go and take the rice in. This is just like totally opposite Vietnam. And then all the price of like food, rice, vegetables Vietnam, Stay, stay the same no difference before or after the pandemic or during the pandemic there's no difference uh, we yeah. we are facing hard problems here i i just want to tell you about uh unemployed and, and let leticia can tell you about vaccine and and immunization in, in brazil but now we have uh 14.3 percent of brazilians unemployed and the brazilian uh, president said uh, just yesterday brazilians are pretty much devoid of skills and can't really do anything. This is his uh, way to justify our rates of unemployment. And that's how he is dealing with that. Uh, he he may, may, he speaks uh, very strange things on the news. He, he and his family are involved in all sorts of scams and, and embezzlement and all, all kinds of illegal stuff. So to cover that up, he keeps coming up with these stupidities, which he vomits all the time. Every time he opens his mouth, some people like, add ah, something trashy comes out. Oh, I mean, it's very strange. It's, Can you imagine the president of your country <laughs> saying that your people can't do anything, that you're not good enough, you're not, you're not skilled, you don't know how to do anything. Can you imagine your president saying that? You're unemployed because you can't do anything? Oh. He also told <laughs> on the news that uh, uh, who take uh, the vaccine could be became, uh, women can become men and men can become women and all together will become an alligator. <laughs> Something like that. Did you know the alligator thing? Is there's a there's a, a Twitter handle about this, a Twitter profile, uh, a website. They made up they made up a website, uh, which is basically counting the number of people who turned into alligators after taking the vaccine. Be after he said this, because he said, "Oh, I don't want to take this vaccine because I don't know what's going to do to me. Maybe it's going to turn me into an alligator or something." Oh and then it became God. an international joke and somebody made a website about it to count the number of people who have actually become alligators after taking the vaccine. I can send you a video because we, we have oh a, a, a character who was an alligator in, in a child book. So there's all kinds of memes going around with this alligator and it's it's just, it's so embarrassing. It's embarrassing. I mean, I'm so... Our president, <laughs> doctor of philosophy. He's ha he has doctor of philosophy in Marxism, and he's very sane. Oh. Oh. Very you are so <laughs> lucky because ours is not sane at all, and he doesn't have a good cell in him. Oh, he's all shit. evil, all of him. Our president, I think he he doesn't want to save us, and um, and when I read Capro. I think they want to 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 make misery, and in misery they can accumulate more and more and more because there is no explanation what they are doing with us in Brazil. Leticia can explain more about he, that. He sounds, you know, he sounds like like a cartoon villain. Yeah. You know, think of the bad guy in a cartoon who wants to destroy the world for no reason. He just wants to see everything in shambles. That's him. Because everything he does is to fuck everybody up. 
everything. So the environment, and he's against the forest, and he's against the Indian pop indigenous populations, and he's against uh, vaccination, and he's against having a good diet, and he's against everything that's normal and that's good. So we don't understand it because it's too much evil in, in the same person. You know what I mean? The, the, it's hard to see a purpose behind it. You understand a company like Coca-Cola, for example, which you mentioned in your interview with us. We know they want profit, but we don't know exactly how he's making money out of it or what his interests are. The only thing that he's interested in is, is saving his family, which is him and his three male children who are all in politics and who are all involved in some kind of illegal activity. And so we don't really know what he's doing. Everything he does is to fuck things up. So if you have a law that protects the environment, then he 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 doesn't you know he doesn't approve it. Uh, if there is a law to start giving out uh, vaccination, he doesn't want to do it. And then he goes out on television and tells people, "I'm not going to have a vaccine because if it's going to turn me into an alligator or something, or you're going to start being weird because if you're a man, you're going to look like a woman." And then he didn't prepare at all. He fired two ministries of health in the middle of a pandemic. Because they were they, they were covered. doing their jobs very uh, kind of yeah. well because they, they kind are of well is not enough. He wants it to be bad. If it's kind of okay, then he cuts them what off. What does he want? What does he, he want? He wanted to get rid of all the hydroxychloroquine pills, which he forced the army to buy. And we have enough hydroxychloroquine for I don't know the entire world years. to protect itself <laughs> against malaria for 15 years. It's ridiculous. And he insists on, the, on this narrative that people should take it because it's, it's going to help against COVID, even though it's been proven not to work. So he keeps telling people to take it and people do it because they're stupid and believe him. And so it's so weird. We don't know. He's doing everything wrong. So he spent all this money on these stupid pills. And now he says he doesn't have any money for the syringes or the needles. So he says, oh, the price is too high now, of course, because everybody wants it. And so we're going to wait until the prices drop so we can buy the syringes and needles. And meanwhile, everybody's left without a vaccine. So it doesn't make any sense. Do you know what I mean? When I talk about a, a cartoon villain, he does exactly what a sane person would not think of doing. And, oh. and also, chloroquine so was lacking for those with autoimmune disease in Brazil because in, in the first in, in the beginning of the pandemic, because he told them to buy all chloroquine stocks, and people went to to drugstores to to buy, and people with uh, autoimmune disease uh, was lacking of this this medicine. Oh my gosh! So he That's invented this thing out of nowhere. <laughs> because somebody mentioned it and then he's, you know, he's stuck with this narrative and nobody else wants to hear about it because it doesn't work. And he's still trying to push people into buying it. And then he also came up with two other drugs that also don't work. One is a drug against worms and another is an antibiotic, which also doesn't work because this is a virus and not a bacterium. So what is going to happen now is that we're going to have resistant strains of bacteria and resistant um uh parasites because okay, people are taking these the world. Things. yes because people are taking these pills like every day i met somebody in a park because i have a dog so i go out with the dog every day and i talk to people in the park i mean we're outdoors wearing masks and this lady said to me oh my husband really believes this he says every time something hurts i just pop a couple of uh antibiotic pills and i feel fine I said, that's not exactly the way this thing works. Antibiotics are not painkillers. And you are just creating a whole bunch of bacteria that are not going to be killed with anything in the future. So next time you have a pneumonia or something, get ready. You're going to die. Exactly. The so not gonna work anymore it doesn't make any sense. But he keeps repeating this. So I mean, he wants to exterminate a large chunk of the population. Nothing else explains it. That's it, and they are trying to to put communists in Brazil as a criminal person. Too. Oh yes, they want to make laws that make communism illegal. I am. I maybe will be an illegal person soon. Maybe I will go to Vietnam. <laughs> Please, you'll be welcome here because. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's crazy. We're all going crazy. Everybody's going crazy because we didn't do a lockdown. We didn't do all we did was like partial lockdowns. Yeah, some stores are closed, some are not. Some people wear masks, some don't. And uh, so we, we're not uh, testing anybody. We're not contact tracing. We don't know what's going on. Our numbers are really very loosely close to reality because we don't know exactly how many cases we have. It is common as hell how we are testing the second domestic vaccine already. Yeah. In the meantime, we also already order from vaccine from Russia, China, and other countries like the USA too. But like, also we are testing on the second vaccine, and then we might have a vaccine, our domestic vaccine, like in May, just in few months, and then um, the price of the vaccine is gonna be under the in health insurance. So it's gonna be like four to five dollars a shot only. Um, like here, that. I think it would be 400, for example, maybe. Because the thing it, is, it, Luna, we have we have a, a national unified uh, health system that everybody has access to, and it's 100 yeah. percent free for everyone. So we were always or for a long time, we were uh, a reference country when it came to public health because we had we broke the, 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 um, the patent for AIDS for HIV drugs. So we make them super cheaply in Brazil and everybody can take these drugs. Even know, the reads the from, even yes. the reads from the, the public system. HIV vaccination in Brazil in the public health was, was. Uh, uh, it was a model, uh, really, yeah. it was a model. We have, if you, if you imagine, if you think of the size of the country, I mean, it's a continental country. We're yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. huge. And we yeah. have very densely populated urban areas and we have very sparsely populated uh, areas in the forest. And yet all these people were vaccinated. It was a very good program, really very, very good program. And everybody adhered to it. It was something normal. Everybody went to have their kids vaccinated. Uh, everybody went to have their shots. They have campaigns on TV, on the newspapers, and everybody knew, well, this week is a vaccine, measles vaccination week. So everybody went to the health units to get their shots. And now people are beginning to doubt vaccines. So we have this president introducing anti-vax in Brazil, which was something unheard of. Everybody used to trust the immunization system in the country because it worked. It truly was yeah. a model. And now people are beginning to distrust it and say, oh, I don't think I'm gonna get this vaccine. I don't wanna to turn to an alligator. There's a Chinese microchip in the vaccine. Uh, yeah. There is that oh, too. It's so, so all sad. this kind of crap, it is. Yeah, I was so admired. I, I, I was so, I admire you a lot of, like you said, like you have free health care. I feel like right now we don't, we don't have it yet. We have free health care just for poor people. But like now everything just fucked up because of that one fucking. Insane. And the thing is, we have a parallel private health system, so right. which only rich people can afford. And now these groups, the owners of these businesses, of these um, health groups, health companies, I don't, I don't even know how to say it. Um, mm -hmm. They are pressuring, they, they're, they're, they're actually uh, lobbying to, uh, to make privately available vaccines a possibility, which doesn't make any sense from the public health point of view because not enough people are gonna be vaccinated this way. Most people cannot afford it. If you only vaccinate 20% of the population because they're the only people who can afford it, it doesn't help. 80%, at least 80%. Yes, it doesn't help at all. So it doesn't make any sense, but they want to make money out of it. And so they're really pushing for this to become a, a reality. And, and I think this is one of the reasons why the government hasn't moved to, uh, to find and to buy vaccines for everybody because they want to, uh, to be paid by these groups in order to make it possible for them yeah. to sell vaccines to rich people. If the rich people get, uh, get vaccinated, mm -hmm. uh, the virus uh, also can mutate it. Uh, there is no reason to vaccine. Uh, uh, we, have to, uh, we have vaccines for rich people and we don't have a uh, vaccine to poor people. The, the system it's worse, has... it's, bad, it's bad for everyone. The virus is gonna mutate and it's gonna turn into something kind of... else. Exactly. The coronavirus is a kind of the more people, the more patient it has, the faster it's gonna mutate. So like, it's not even if like if if they just have like a decent intelligence, you know, 
they will know that it not it's not gonna work and they're gonna do something about it but like but they think they had a lot of a lot of them in the government actually caught the virus or we think they did we don't know for sure uh and they said no we're fine we took hydroxychloroquine and we're totally fine uh and then they say oh i'm not gonna get a, a vaccine because i already have antibodies because i have had the disease already which is not even true we don't know if that's possible we don't know if you're immune after having it uh so you should take the shot anyway you should give the example and he's doing the exact opposite and more and more people are deciding not to vaccinate because of this and it's Gosh. driving everybody crazy because we can't go anywhere we're stuck at home schools are closed a lot of people are working from home um and of course the companies never help those who work from home so you still have to eat your you still have to use internet and uh you know your electricity bills are higher because you're home all day uh and of course they don't help you with those bills with those expenses so we are actually making less money yep uh, what, problem. what about the, the unemployment rate in brazil right now uh in unemployment brazil is the rate is about 14.3 percent of people and because a lot uh, and these numbers is not the correct number because in brazil liberal way to to measure that it's some kind of thing like that oh are i don't have a, a job if i i'm looking for a job i am in a in an in employment people person but if I'm not looking for a job, I'm not this kind of people. So the rate maybe will a be more higher. Uh, more higher than, than we, we think. And in, in Brazil... The people who actually are looking for jobs, not like people... A lot of people are not looking because they can't afford it. They can't take the bus or because they're sick or because they, don't, they can't shower or they don't have an, a permanent address or because for, they don't have anybody to leave their kids with. There's so many reasons why somebody won't look for a job. Sometimes they're just tired because they've been looking for months and there are no jobs. So they just say, you know, what's the point of going out every day and paying the bus fare and leaving my children with the neighbor and, you know, and I don't know, wearing my shoes, walking around when I know there are no jobs for me. So I'll just stay home. So a lot of people are not looking anymore because they know it's, they're not going to find anything. And and we talked on my channel about feminicide, uh, and I think it's very important to tell to to uh, the people who follow you in your channel. Uh, in Brazil, uh, a human uh, is killed every nine hours during the pandemic in Brazil. It's higher now than before the pandemic. It's, a, okay. it's higher now before the pandemic. The unemployment rate in Vietnam is only every year about like one percent. But now after this pandemic, it's like up to like 2.5%. And then everything is back to normal right now. So it's going down right now. So it's the most we had like 3.2, uh, 2, 2.5, 2.7, something like that. Right. If, if the people if people can go out, then life resumes and, and businesses can work. Yep. And here, some of them are closed, some are not. The schools are closed. So a lot of teachers are out of jobs. Uh, and then if you speak out against the government, a lot of parents will, will say, oh, my, my son's teacher is a communist on Facebook. And then the school will kick them out. So there are so many things to consider. People are losing their jobs for the strangest reasons. And um, it just, it doesn't, nothing makes any sense. It's very sad. A lot of people are suffering. A lot of people are going hungry. There are no jobs because people are not buying anything. They can't go anywhere. The malls are closed and they're, if they lose their jobs and they can't afford to buy anything and then the stores close and the, the people who worked at the stores are out of a job. So it's yeah. a circle. Yep. Like, like, in mm -hmm. Brazil, teachers can, uh, uh, if some teacher speaks about communism, for example, for example, uh, maybe he can get fired about that. Yeah, if they mention it in class, because we have private schools and yep. most hey. parents who can afford private schools are right wing people. And so if communism is mentioned in a positive light, they will complain and they don't want any of this mentioned at school. It's it's just a, like a domino effect of crap. Basically. I just have a, a job because I'm a public teacher, because if I was in private section uh, sector, I was fired. Uh, maybe you wouldn't, two you wouldn't years have a job. Ago. Nobody would yeah. hire you. 
Oh my. I'm so sad. I don't know what to say. It's just so depressing. It what is. What you gonna do with it? What you gonna do with it? Everybody's going crazy. Like Everybody you, we know is depressed and sad. Do you know a YouTuber in Brazil named Johnny Manuel? He doesn't have a job as a teacher because he is a communist in Brazil. I heard I heard about him and I didn't know that he couldn't find any job because of that. That that his problem in Brazil now. Oh my. He lives with the chain and other things, but he cannot teach in public school or university in Brazil because of that. If you, we're recording, well, now it's it's the 7th, but um, we started recording on the 6th of January. And that's when the whole mess in uh, Washington DC happened. When they broke into the Capitol, they actually didn't break into anything because the police let them in. Um, but the whole speech that Trump gave before it all happened, he mentioned communism a bunch of times there is still this very real communist ghost and we make fun of it in Brazil. We have a ton of memes because we are a meme nation. Uh, but there is still this very, um, it's, it's a very firmly planted idea in people's minds that you have to fight communist communism at all costs. It doesn't matter what you have to do. And people, if you ask people in the street, what is communism? Nobody really knows. They've just heard about it. Nobody knows. I, I know because I've asked it a couple of, a couple of times to some people I know. Why? Why? What is wrong with you? Why are you so afraid of communism? What do you think it is? And they don't have an answer. They don't know what it is. They just repeat exactly. what the president says. And it's the same situation as in the U.S. Here's my conclusion about anti-communist and communist. Anti-communists, they love capitalism because they don't know how it actually works. That's why they love it. And anti-communists, they hate communism because also they don't know what it actually is. They don't understand it. And that's the problem, the worldwide problem is so tired. I mean, I'm lucky that I got like education since like six years old. That's why I really understand how it works and how it actually better for humanity. And I also like study in the like, top 10 best business university in Vietnam. So you can imagine this. In the morning, I study um, Marxism, Leninism, learn how capitalism works, learn about the nature of capitalism is exploitation. In the afternoon, I learn like macro and micro economy classes. And I just learn how to like hold as much as profit as possible. <laughs> Did you think about that? So that's why I, I usually make fun, but kind of a half truth. Like, why China become like so powerful right now? Even though like they also teach Marxism in their schools, like Vietnam. You know, why? Because we actually know how it works. Yeah. <laughs> we fucking know how it works, and and we like we manipulate it. We use it to make like to make our country rich. I I'm not even pro China or anti China. I just speaking about it in like a materialist um, you know, a, a viewpoint. It's kind of the thing that persuade me about like, like bootlickers and like pro capitalist people, they don't now know how it works, especially in this pandemic. Like they want profit. They want to be like richer and richer and richer. But in this pandemic, they have to give up short-term benefits to gain long-term profit. Shut down your country in a few months give up your few months profit. And then in the long term the economy will return normal and you have more and more money, but they don't. They rather stick to like short term profits and then mm -hmm. fuck everything up. And the economy now is collapsing. So like, I'm suspicious It's right stupid. Now they don't even know how it works. They don't You're even pissed, know good. That's what we do in our podcast. We get pissed. <laughs> yes. Ah. Ah. I believe I can break this right now. Now we're gonna hurt your hand. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm speechless right now. My very last question is about the uh, the communist communism over there. Like the I don't know how to display it, like the wave. There's any like sign of raising of communism raising up over there or something like that? I'm curious. Here in Brazil, we have Bolsonaro. Uh, he is uh, the liberal way to think Bolsonaro is our problem. They, they don't uh, want to, 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 to us to know uh, 
capitalism is, is our real problem. But they, they want to know Bolsonaro is the, the problem. If we take out Bolsonaro, the problem uh, will be solved. And the problems are, the problem will, will be gone and that's there is not the correct answer to that because uh, the re, the main problem in brazil we have political political uh, uh, matters that we have to 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 think about uh, the workers uh, cannot uh, have uh, their alimony alimony they were mm -hmm. Ah, I, I remember. Uh, the workers cannot have the, their alimony because uh, these liberal political political this liberal way to to thinking and make political politic politics in Brazil uh, just tell but Bolsonaro is the problem. But we can uh, sell our health. We can sell off our edu ed educational system. We can. Uh, flexibilize uh, the uh, workers' law, and this is, uh, th these are our main problem, because we are uh, making a more exploration in work work cl working class in Brazil. In Brazil, we have congressmen, uh, they are uh, LGBT friendly, they are anti-racist, uh, they are feminist, uh, and they are also uh, uh, in favor of uh, exploration of working class. But in Brazil, they just see, oh, they are LGBT friendly, or they are feminist, or they are anti-racist, but they are not anti-capitalism. So capitalist, so people uh, like them. And we, radicals, communists, we are the bad people in Brazil. We are for them like the, the same, uh, 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 like Bolsonaro, like Hitler, like, like Hitler. I, I have to tell yeah. that Hitler in Brazil is yeah. is just like Marx, uh, 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 war, uh, socialist experience, and, and they I tell. The uh, oh. Yes, you, <laughs> you are like this. Uh, to them in Brazil, uh, so uh, Hitler, uh, Marx, uh, anyway, all, all Marxists in, in Brazil are just like the same Mussolini, Hitler, and all the, this kind of of people, and they like to 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 this kind of uh, congressman who who has th this kind of politics but mm. don't ha doesn't have uh, the anti capitalist way to think about and, and fight against. So uh, more exploration to the working class and more LGBT friendly uh, policies, but uh, they, they, they don't like uh, communists, for example. So we have to try, we have to, to, to make many uh, different ways to, to make politics in Brazil. Uh, we have we are in the parties, uh, but uh, we are uh, we are not a major uh, party in Brazil, and uh, we are doing something different right now in Brazil. That is YouTube, because uh, in the last three years we are making more uh, people and Marxist uh, young guys uh, doing, doing videos and uh, talking to young, young people about Marxism, about communism, socialism, and what, and, and we are making some progress, but it's very, very, very uh, uh, small, uh, and we need to do more in Brazil. I'm in my right let totally yep it's it's really hard to fight this anti-communism you know feeling it's really hard to revert this thing now it's very widespread and it's so hard to revert it it's like uh trying to bring back people who believe into believe in, in conspiracy theories and trying to bring them back to reality it's really hard really hard I was doing some speech in, in, in my T-shirt was uh, wrote uh, Marxism, and some colleague 
it just attacked me because oh you are using some t-shirts in your t-shirt it was what was there written. are mark uh, written in your t-shirt marxism you can do that this is an outrage i i i have to to tell you we have to debate it. i don't i i am uh, furious now I yes it, <laughs> brazil I, become the I didn't the slap that board. day. I was so furious. I didn't slap that day yeah. because, what, 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 what did I do? I, I yeah. just yeah. were, where? I, I, I just forgot the, 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 the verb about. Yeah. But I, I was wearing a t-shirt. Just it. <laughs> I was telling yeah. about COVID numbers, just numbers, N nothing else. <laughs> well. The red scare is really strong there. Got it. And yeah, the thing, the first, all, the first thing I want to like tell you is like stay safe, please. Yeah, stay safe. I, I'm Ooh, trying. Now. Yes, we're trying really hard. This pandemic like opened a lot of people's eyes about well, about capitalism and how actually bad and horrible for human mankind is. It's a, it's a kind of system that only work if it has like perfect conditions. Like if you think about it, every seven or eight years in every country, there will be an economy recession. Like it's so fragile, it's a so fragile system that it will collapse. It will collapse like even like with a small, small problem. Like Vietnam, we deal with the pandemic for a few months and then we've done with it, deal. But even to, until now, we cannot open our border yet, just because of other countries of the world. <laughs> the world is <laughs> burning out there. The world is burning out there, and we have to close our door to protect our own people. We desperately want to open our international flights and bring back tourism, but we can't do it. Yeah. We need to protect our own people first. It's fucked up. It's so bad. And just like, just give up profit for a few months and quarantine people and give them like free treatment, free testing, free vaccine, they'd be done with it. But they can't even do that. They're killing themselves. I don't know how this pandemic is gonna end. In Brazil, like how is it gonna end? I, uh, that's still an open question right here. I don't know even what to say. <sighs> 200 and thousand. 200, almost 200,000 deaths by COVID. And that's not an accurate number. There's many, many more. A lot of people died of yes, SARS okay, that we, they haven't lying. been tested. They haven't been tested. Yeah, yeah right? Yes, yeah, the same thing. My friend, uh, EJ's friend is a nurse in the USA. And they said that he had COVID-19 and he's never on the record. Instead, he sent him home and then he lost his job a few days later. Oh my God. Wow. So, yeah, so like capitalist countries are lying about their own numbers, but the Western media is just telling about like Vietnam cannot be that good. They are lying. They're not reporting the truth. Like, for fuck's sake, we have so few cases that we can track, <laughs> and we can trace and track like every single patient in Vietnam. Where did they go and who did they meet? We have only like 1,400 cases and more than a half of them came from outside of Vietnam because we are sending flights to other countries to rescue our residents, citizens outside of Vietnam back home to give them free treatment with not even taking their money. And then, yeah, and we have only 35 deaths in Vietnam. And actually, I feel a bit kind of unfair to Vietnam to report that those 35 deaths as uh, COVID-19 cases because uh, uh, a few months ago, the COVID-19 came reach a, a hospital right, nine, right next to our house, actually like a one mile away from our house, two kilometers. And like it is the, the hospital for cancer patients, like third stage patients, like all 35 of them already had like blood cancer, like kidney cancer, liver cancer. And the COVID-19 was just like the last straw that broke the mm. camel's back. And they died shortly after that. And then we still report it as COVID-19 death. It's kind of, kind of you know, unfair, but it's okay. We have a 35 deaths, sadly. We try to stay zero, but it's impossible. So, 
Yes, that's the thing. Like, please do not buy into anti-communist Western media propaganda <laughs> about Vietnam. Yeah. Fucked up. That that's we hear here about you guys there. <laughs> I'm so tired of fighting the lies every day. What is your message to the leftists in your home country? What do you want to say to them? I'm gonna say something that is a message for myself. Uh, because I really need to study more. And uh, we keep telling people to organize themselves, meaning yeah. join parties and uh, join assemblies of people and, and local councils and things like that. And that's something I don't do and it's something I should do. So I'm telling people to do something that I don't do in the hopes that I will start doing it too. Uh, get more involved in the, um, the issues of your neighborhood, of your street, uh, whatever you can. And of course, now it's difficult, especially if you are not in Vietnam, so you can't go anywhere because there's still a pandemic going around. But if there are public meetings online and open to the public, make sure to follow your 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 politicians, the people you voted for, and to see what's going on in your city, in your neighborhood, in your street. And uh, you have to start locally, I think. And I think uh, new new liberalism uh, cut this community ties between us. So I think we also uh, we need to recurve that. Uh, we need to to remember we live in community. We not uh, we are we not we are not uh, an individual, and we don't have to do the things alone because we have to do the things together to make us alive. Um, and also we have to, I think in Brazil, people should more uh, embrace the party, uh, the fight against capitalism in Brazil. And we know it's very hard for the, these examples we, we, we show to show it to, to, to you, because um, when we try that, some people are get attacked to do that. So, so it's very hard, but we have to, to, to hope is, is the big word to that, but hope we fight. Uh, two things to do, hope we fight, and we are not alone. We are a community in neoliberalism, neoliberalism um, take out that from us. We have to take back. Thank you so much for your message and thank you so much for being here with me. And I would love to have both of you uh, sometimes in the future to so like give us more report, updated report. About yeah, this, about we can can good. can make some schedule. <laughs> Three yeah, years. Right. Let's what hope something happens <laughs> so that we have something to yeah. report. Because if things remain like this, there will be nothing to report. So things oh are still the same. I'm so I, <laughs> I will I'm write sick. to you in copy for Leticia because I, when uh, here, <laughs> then, <laughs> then, then we can can keep talking, uh, keep in touch. Uh, to talking about Brazil and Vietnam. I, I would like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, both of you, for being here. And uh, Thank you, Luna. That was really spread, nice. Spread, yeah, spread your words and spread your information and knowledge to my audience. And uh, see you next time. And hope that I can bring up you both of you up soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.